Hello everyone and welcome to Jacklet Educational Channel. So this is the part two of the statistics because of the overwhelming responses which all the students have shown in the first part. So if you haven't checked the first part, the link is in the description below. So in this statistics part, we will similarly discuss all the questions which came in environmental science and other competitive exam. So we'll not go into the depth of the concept, but we will know how to solve all these questions. So let's start the part two. The first question which we are dealing today is the stages of malignant disease, for example, cancer is recorded using the symbols 1, 2, 3 and 4. So which shows the scale of what? So that means we know the cancer stage that is stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and stage 4. So they depict which of the following scale. And here the correct option will be option number B ordinal kind of scale. So if you don't know about these kind of scales, don't worry because you are going to now know about these four important measurement scales. So these are called as scales of measurement. So one by one we'll know and it's very simple. Don't worry guys. So what is meant by nominal? So nominal word jo hai, wo aaya hai name se. So anything which has any name that is called as nominal. So name to nominal. So it has named variable and for example, it can consider gender that is male or female. Those are name also. It can consider the religion that is Hindu, Muslim, Christian or Sikh. So any name given to any category of scale is will be under nominal. Next comes the ordinal. So ordinal as we have discussed the answer of the question. So it can be the exam grade that is grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 or grade 4. It can be the position in class that is first position, second position, third position. So all this grade, position in class and satisfaction level comes under the ordinal. So what is the difference between name, nominal and ordinal? Nominal is having only named variable but ordinal is having named along with ordered variables that's why it is called as ordinal next comes the interval so you know interval is very easy among all these four see these four are also easy so interval means for example someone is telling the temperature is in between 30 to 40 degrees celsius in odisha so that means that is the range or interval so interval consists of iq you can say which the iq level is between 5 to 6 or temperature as we have discussed now or the score that is score average score is between 40 to 50 or CGPA so these all things come under interval part next we will see important that is ratio ratio you all know that is everything which is under the P by Q form will be considered as ratio so that can be height of 2% that is ratio between the father and son it can be the ratio between weight time age or grant so the most important thing about this ratio category of scale is that it considers and can accommodate absolute zero. Yes, ratio can be absolute zero because something is having zero by two that can be considered as zero, that is absolute zero. But in case of interval, ordinal or nominal case, the absolute zero is not found. So these are the four important measurement scale. You should remember this because most often questions are coming in the exam from these four measurement scale. So let's move to the next question. The next question is, if the mean is less than the mode, then the skewness is what kind of? So if you don't know even what is skewness, but you should know that what is mean and mode, that is very basic. So if you know the answer, that will be the answer number A, negative, then you will be able to get the mark easily. So when mean is less than mode, the skewness is negative, you should note it down. And when the mean is greater than mode, then the skewness will be positive. And when mean is equal to mode, then the skewness will be equal to zero. Remember this one, when mean is equal to the mode of any given distribution, then the skewness will be zero. So let's move to the next question. Next question is, which test is preferred for comparing the variance of two independent samples? So here we have asked, which test we prefer when we compare the variance of two independent samples? So here the correct option will be option number D F test. Yes, F test is used to compare the variance of two independent sample and it is also known as Fisher's F test. So name after the scientist Fisher. Let's move to the next question. The next question is a complete enumeration of all items in the population is known as what? 
so you should think carefully because it may be confusing for some people so here the correct option will be option number b census so if you are having doubt between sample survey and census then let me clear it out because sample survey ka matlab hota hai sample survey means if you are going to do a particular kind of study then you are going to take a particular sample for the survey for example if you are going to know about the age structure if you are going to know about the literacy rate for that we have to take the sample survey but if enumerating all the items such as age sex ratio literacy level everything as if we are doing in our country census then it will be called as the census of total population enumerating all the items so let's move to the next question the next question is a population from where samples are drawn is called as what so here the correct option will be option number c accessible population yes accessible population is also known as study population you should mark this one and it is the population in research to which the researchers can apply their conclusion so this per conclusion apply ho sakta hai usse kehte hain accessible population so as you can see in this picture so if we are considering the general population as the total population that is the complete circle then inside that target population reside and a part of target population is called as accessible population for where the samples are drawn so i hope you have understood this one general population consists of target population and accessible population both so let's move on to the next question so the next question is from the multiple regression analysis the question is in a multiple regression analysis don't worry if you don't know about multiple regression analysis i will give you a simple formula first read the questions if the variance of the observed variable that is y is 1.57 and variance of the residue is 0.52 then what will be its r square value even if you don't know what is multiple regression what is r square if you know this formula that i am giving you now that is 1 minus variance of the residue divided by the variance of the observed variable then you will be able to get the value of r square so where it is so we have to subtract 1 minus variance of the residue what is given here that is 0.52 divided by the variance of the observed variable what is that one that is 1.57 so after calculating that we are getting the answer as 0.67 you should calculate this so option number a will be the correct option so you have seen here that how easily it was calculated just to remember the formula 1 minus variance of the residue by the variance of the observed variable let's move on to the next question the next question is a non parametric test generally used to compare sample variance to the theoretical population variance is called as what so here the correct option will be option number c chi square test yes chi square test is the non parametric test okay if you don't know non parametric test and parametric test we will go now and see what are their difference and what are the kind of test so before that do remember that the non parametric test used to compare sample variance with the theoretical population variance is called as chi square test so let's move on to the next slide so i have made a table for you to understand easily about the differences between parametric and non parametric test to aaiye jante hain inke differences ke bare mein so the first point is in parametric test we have to make assumption about the population but in non parametric test it doesn't consider any assumption the second point is parametric test uses a normal probabilistic distribution whereas the distribution is arbitrary in case of non parametric test the third point is which is very important the parametric test uses a mean value for the central tendency whereas the non parametric test considers median value for the central tendency the fourth and very important is the parametric test requires previous knowledge about the population whereas in non parametric test there is no need of requirement of previous knowledge about the population which we are going to test so the example of parametric test is one way anova and t test whereas best example for non parametric test is chi square and kruskal wallis test so i hope you have able to understand this easily so that's all in this part of the video i hope you have learned something from this aur agar aapko isi tarah ke video chahiye to aap please subscribe kar dijiye hamare is channel ko so that you will be getting the notification 
as soon as I upload any video. So don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends.